Welcome back to Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And in the hot seat, this is part two of my conversation with Mark Gus Scott of Trickster. Make sure you subscribe and put your comments down below. Well, what happened with a lot of bands, the number one timing, uh, we went from having the best of everything. Uh, 1990 through 91 was our was, was an amazing time. We uh, had three number one videos on MTV, a platinum record, uh, the biggest tours, the best management, the best agent, the, you know, a, a lot of backing at the record company. Uh, we, we had a lot of positives. And we went from number one. We were we, we were the last number one video to be played on MTV. Our third single surrender, uh, our third video on MTV, uh, went number one after two days of play, and we were number one for two weeks. And we were cut. The top ten countdown was cut from MTV, and we couldn't understand why. But it didn't just affect Trickster; it affected the whole genre. Uh, bon Jovi didn't get played anymore. Def Leppard didn't get played anymore. Winger, Warrant, Firehouse, all these bands, L.A. Guns, it had a Kiss. You know, all the bands that dominated MTV led a chain. Mm -hmm. The big question is why? And uh, that's a subject for debate. But the fact of the matter is it happened. And uh, what bands like uh, Def Leppard and Bon Jovi that were selling eight, 10 million records. Well, their next record in America did like two million. So bands like Trickster that we sold a million records, our next record did about 200,000 copies. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Now, I don't care what business you're in. When you lose 75 percent of your sales in one year. It's fucking devastating. You know, I would, you know, if, if, uh, the, the, if you're a manager of a company that's, that's making, you know, lava lamps and, and your, your sales are down 75 fucking percent, you're going to go down to that warehouse and say, what the fuck is going on down here? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's problem one. So it wasn't like, Oh, I hate you. I'm fucking done. It was the climate of what was going on. And the biggest thing was if you're not going to have a plan of attack or how you're going to move forward with your organization, uh, you're going to have a very tough time. And nobody in the band really wanted to sit down and come up with a plan or, or talk about what, what was up. And, uh, I, I was the first to leave in January of 95. Uh, we showed up to, a we, we had this club tour theater tour booked, and uh, we show up to the first gig and the place is closed and nobody told us, you know what I mean? It's like, how does that happen? So it was a very bad sign. And, and I, I always had this motto. I said, if we're not having fun, we're going home. Even when things were riding high, we were rocking. I was, I, I, I was, I was high on life. You know, I, I was just rocking. And I always had that, that motto. I said, if we're not having a great job, we're going home. Yeah, That kind of thing. And it got to a point where I was not having a good time. And I was the first one to say it. And I said, guys, I want to go. You said and I'll be honest with you, I never thought I would be the guy to say that. I, I love the band more than anything. I love playing more than anything. But for some reason, I really did feel that way. And, how, did, uh, how did they handle that when you said that to them? I think they got upset with me, you know, uh, that, that I was no longer all for one, all for one for all kind of thing. Uh, but again, it was kind of thing nobody ever wanted to fucking talk about, you know, and they just did it. They were into drinking and, and like, you know, ignoring the problem, just like going through it where I couldn't do it that way. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's just a thing within me. I, I felt it was wrong. So yeah, uh, yeah. They, they carried on for a little while longer and disbanded later in 95. Is that when they disbanded in 95? I mean, mm -hmm. you you come off, and I could tell from this, you have a strong personality, you know, and I could tell you back in the day in Trickster as well. I mean, you think the, the bandmates, have any jealousy, like, like because you're outgoing? This, was there any jealousy ever between any bandmates or anything like that? See, I don't think so. You know what, dude? Even with all the ego and all the shot, spotlight, all that bullshit, I don't think there, I really don't think there was jealousy within the ranks. I, I really don't. Mm -hmm. um, it was because again, everybody had their constituency. There was no one guy that was so far below anyone else that they didn't have any constituency. You know what I mean? So no, I don't believe that was it at all. Uh, I, at least not for me, you know, if, uh, if someone else had jealousy towards me or anything that, you know, that I don't know. But I, I can't understand why, you know, well, again, everybody had like somebody goes, he got five chicks and we got none. What the hell's going on here? No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that ever happened. But, you know, you know, Steve was married. That was another yeah. thing. So he kept it. You know, he kept it. He, he was on the straight and narrow. He's a good man. But, uh, you know, it, 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 
nobody stole women from somebody else and there somebody got bitter about it no there was they it so that was not the situation at all and like you know people can maybe stones. theorize on the outside but yeah. there was nothing it, it was nothing like that at no all. rolling stones brian jones keith richards thing going on and anywhere like i don't that. know how the whole dynamic at all so no yeah. not, no yeah. i mean and i don't think anybody slept with any men so. okay 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 <laughs> Again, just, not knowing i guess it's safe but just I didn't. Be, <laughs> and, and just a disclaimer if anybody's any men asleep together, i don't care i don't care i'm i'm okay give a shit either Everybody's all i'm saying is i don't think it's gonna you know it didn't it didn't uh, affect anybody somebody's gonna take a clip out of this and go steve brown slept with mark gus scott on the okay uh, i didn't fucking say that and it's not true anyway so you see you're now you're gaslighting shit I'm not gaslighting. you know what i'll do you one better i did sleep with every fucking member of the band sometimes we'd only get one hotel room day room and we'd sl- sw- we'd have to fucking double up in a bed to get some fucking sleep these are rock and roll road stories everybody watching so now yeah now- you know so we have it's more fun it's more fun and comedy than sexual fucking craziness you know what i mean it, it totally is so recently and particularly these days again that's the dynamic yeah. I'm fucking 30 years older than I used to be. You know, when I was 25, totally, fuck yeah, totally. I was fucking rocking. Totally. So now your relationship with, with Trickster. Steve Brown, when recently he he was uh, said that you never invited to play back in the band again, that you're an adequate drummer at best. And as I know you, and I've seen you play, I've heard you play and took lessons from the best. Adequate, I don't know if that's the right word, but what, what's your what's your feelings to that comment when you heard that? I have no response. It's like, come on, uh, you know, I go go to YouTube and take a fucking look, tough guy. You know, anybody that I, I played in front of millions of people, they also every night. Uh, you know, it's funny when when they put that out. I, I responded by putting out an article more recently, a show we did opening for Brett Michaels at the uh, uh, Mass Mutual Center in mm-hmm. Springfield, Massachusetts, and uh, it was a very favorable review highlighting me out of anybody in the band so you know it's like i, I now I, I never really bumped it with a trumpet to that regard because I, that's not really my thing but i felt it was appropriate at that time to just you know shed a little light on what was really up uh, and it stemmed from it stemmed from i don't know bad taste in somebody's mouth and it, it was a, probably a, a quick little out of the mouth comment that ended up becoming a big thing and i you know i know how it kind of works but you know what what, what prompted it it's kind of funny I quit the band again at the at the end of the summer 2017 and nobody heard a word about anything until like 2020 21 so it's like wait a minute what happened and i didn't talk to those guys at all during that time so something flared within them yeah uh you know and it certainly wasn't propagated by me uh, you know, it, it, you know, that, that's it maybe some old festering shit or uh, may, so when you bring up the word jealousy, uh, I wonder if that plays into it more recently of some things that I've been doing that has nothing to do with them. You know what I mean? But they take it as a weird. I, I don't know. You know, the fact that I have to be brought up in the conversation, I find very interesting being that I'm not associated with any other rock act at this point. I'm not even in the industry anymore, but yeah. I, they keep pulling me back in. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth of it. Like, Lily, nothing was said for a three year period. I think I, I did a remake of Give It To Me Good in celebration of the 30th anniversary. And those guys did fucking nothing. And by the way, my version sonically came out sounded pretty fucking good. So. No, it, I got a lot of attention also press wise. So I don't know if that may be. T- I didn't do it to strike at them. I did it just because no one else fucking did anything. How mm-hmm. fucking stupid was that? So, you know, I just did my own version. I went to a studio and fucking cut it with a buddy of mine, Lupe Kadachi, who did a great fucking job. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I also wanted to explore the idea of expanding the demographic footprint of the song. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really had a country feel to it. Yeah. So, so right. You're, you're smart. You know how to mix it up a little bit. You know, you're a businessman. What about. What about the trickster trademark? What's the st- real story? The trickster what? The, the trademark for trickster. Did you stop right there? We have more of our interview with Marcus Scott coming up next. Just make sure you click on the box you see on your screen. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified so you don't miss any other future episodes. And if you want to see our episodes and be a part of the interview, become a member today on Artist on Record on YouTube join today in the meantime put your comments down below and remember who loves you baby we do